Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is October 14th and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You got the state of California right here. Check out the Gulf of Alaska low and it's spreading some energy. It's going to round the, the uh, southern periphery of this trough and it's going to move into the west coast of North America here and we're going to get a couple frontal systems, big pattern change, big uh, dip in the temperatures and even some mountain snowfall, a bit of precipitation for some areas and maybe some stronger winds starting to show up here as we go through the extended model. I'll show you that here in a moment. Taking a look at the visible satellite imagery where we are right now. You can see the marine layer fairly well socked in there. San Diego, Los Angeles, up towards Santa Barbara, some of the coastal valleys, Bay Area, all the way up and down the California coastline here. And uh, But if we take a look way off to the upper left there, you can see that frontal system moving into the Pacific Northwest. And that is going to be the start of that change here. It eventually reaches down into portions of California. So taking a look at the upper levels of the atmosphere, 18,000 feet approximately 500 millibars the Gulf of Alaska troughing here and we put this into motion you can see that frontal system moving into the Pacific Northwest this is going to swing down across portions of the California as well ushering in the much colder air mass here for the west coast of North America and uh, again this could bring some uh, snow for the higher elevations as well and then as we go towards this weekend we're going to get some high pressure it's going to try to build down across the great basin and kick some offshore winds drying things out kicking up those winds and some of the fire danger is going to increase here as we go towards the second half of october so stay tuned for that look at the wind gust forecast for thursday check it out Vacaville, you know, up to 40 miles per hour sacramento gusty some northerly winds coming as you can see and again and this is for Thursday, October 17th. More on that here in a moment. Uh, the big danger of this really is that we still have fire conditions out there. And this is going to help to amplify some of that. This is for Friday. You can see, again, gusty winds across much of the Sacramento Valley area. Some of the higher terrain of the Sierra Nevada as well. Fire weather concerns, moderate impacts starting to show up there. And there's a fire weather watch here. You can see it includes Redding, Chico, Sacramento, all the way down through Stockton. And Modesto, the lower relative humidities. And these gusty winds in the Delta. Look at that, 50 miles per hour in the Valley, up to 40 miles per hour. This goes through. 8 p.m. Saturday. And also wanted to point this out. We have beach hazard statements all the way down towards Big Sur here for sneaker wave activity. This goes on through 9 p.m. Wednesday. Do not turn your back on the ocean. That is a good rule to live by living uh, alongside of the biggest ocean on the planet here, especially when these storms start going in the early season. People get caught off guard. And every single year, people are injured or worse across the West Coast of North America. So keep that in mind if you're heading out towards the coastal areas. And you can see another graphic here they had put out uh, early this morning, elevated winds, sneaker waves, rip currents out there. You know, just don't turn your back on the ocean. Watch your kids and your pets. It's no joke. And taking a look at this, Palm Springs, new record of 110 degree days in 2024. 83, 110 plus days. That is a new record. The old record was 66 set back in 2020. Yeah, so yeah, pretty impressive there. Now, taking a look at uh, San Diego, California. Look at the highs today. So we're looking at 98 for Palm Springs, thermal 98. Relatively comfortable, you know, and if you really want to cool off, you get out towards the coastal regions. You see San Bernardino checking in at 81. Victorville at 82. Look at Big Bear Lake. Nice and comfortable 70 degrees so taking a wider view of things we got the hawaiian islands the bottom up there's california weak frontal system in towards the pacific northwest and not too much of an impact there for california but the one on wednesday is you can see as we go through wednesday morning we start to kick up some precipitation for the coastal areas that moves across the interior the valley areas as we go through late morning wednesday into the early afternoon tries to bring a little bit of precip for the bay area maybe down towards modesto here as well south of sacramento sierra nevada maybe a little bit of snow for the very highest terrain and then we have another frontal system it's going to be swinging through that has a little bit better chance as we go through thursday night into friday for bringing some snow for the higher terrain that's going to really usher in that cool air mass high pressure fills in behind that we get some offshore grading some offshore winds will be in effect across a lot of the state we'll look at that here more in a moment as well and with that, it's going to bring some lower relative humidities. But I did want to show you the European Ensemble on the left versus the National Blend of Models on the right. This is total precipitation in inches. This is an average of all 50 European Ensemble members, I should mention. And you can see, so as we go on in through, you know, 
Thursday, this is Wednesday night into Thursday morning. You can see that Astro Planet models with the one two punch of precipitation here. It's showing that mainly for central and northern California. But the Europeans been a little more generous with some of that activity across some of the uh, southern California, especially the higher terrain. You can see the National Planet models teases out a little bit there as well. Some precipitation for Nevada, Utah, and Arizona also. So it's not a washout by any means, but we're still going through the fall transition here. And anything is very welcome, especially with the excessive heat we've been dealing with for the last few weeks. Looking at two meter temperature anomaly, still above average as we go through the day today, as you can see. And then we go on through Tuesday, still many places above average, except maybe the uh, immediate coastal areas here. And then we go on in through Wednesday and you can see the pattern change coming. Look at this cooler air really start to move in here as we go on in through Thursday afternoon, Thursday night into Friday. Big pattern change. Most of you are going to be feeling that by the time we get to Friday morning, especially look at the higher terrain, well below normal for this time of year as we go through late Friday morning, Nevada, Utah, even all down towards the peninsula ranges here at the transverse range. Nice pattern change is incoming. And if we look at total snow in inches on the national blend of models, let's scroll on through here and see when the snow starts to show up. We're now going through Tuesday. Here we go on in through Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night. Now we're into Wednesday afternoon. You see a little bit of that activity across some of the higher trade of the Sierra Nevada with the arrival of that first frontal system. Then the second one swings down and you get a little bit more. So you might get an inch or two across the higher terrain there. And look at that showing up across even some of the transverse range. If you, you know, want to make a nice social media post, show some of the snow flying across some of the higher terrain of Southern California during the month of October, that's bound to get some good engagement. Um, but yeah, anyway, just kind of pointing that out. You can see maybe an inch or two, maybe a little bit higher for some of the highest peaks out there as we go on in through this weekend coming up. Now looking at mean sea level pressure. So what is gonna happen here as we bring these frontal systems through? You can see the high pressure building. Look at this gradient starting to set up across Northern California. Pretty strong gradient showing up there. And that's why we have the fire weather concerns. The relative humidities are gonna drop and the fire danger will increase as these high pressure kind of centered right over Southern Oregon, North uh, West Nevada here. And yeah, that might go on for a couple of days as we go through this weekend. Look at Saturday morning again, High pressure here is going to be flowing out across California with that offshore wind. Now, taking a look at the relative humidity, you can see as we go through uh, where we are currently, you can see the valleys, you know, you're talking 60, 70 percent, of course, drier over the desert areas. But watch what happens as we go off towards the end of the week. And you can see things really start to dry out as these offshore winds kick up. So that's when the fire danger is going to be the highest, probably looking you know, once we start getting into Thursday night on in through Friday afternoon shown here, then we go to Saturday afternoon shown here. Really much of the region is going to have some very uh, dry air in place. So we're going to watch out for the fire concerns there. And this would be for Sunday. And uh, look at the winds here. This is about 925 millibars, about 2,500 feet off the surface. So. As the frontal system comes through, as we go through winds, you can see the gusty winds kicking up across here, the strong winds, uh, of course, uh, from north to south down the coastline. That's not that unusual. But if we go on in towards uh, Thursday night, you see things start to turn offshore, the gusty northerly winds coming across northern California, and then things turn a bit more offshore as we go on in through Friday and on in through Saturday here. So yeah, we're going to be starting to nail down some of these wind speeds a little bit more as we get closer to see how strong this event is going to be. Taking a look at daily two meter max temperatures for today, Monday, October 14th. Here we go for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You can see things cooling down here, much more comfortable. A little bit of a break from the heat as we go towards the mid and the end of the week and then maybe bouncing back a hair. But yeah, at this time of year, things are definitely much more comfortable. So the, the excessive heat is likely gone, even though we may bounce back a little bit above average, it's still much more comfortable. And I wanted to show the daily two meter minimum temperatures as well, because check this out. This is Wednesday morning. Look at Thursday morning here. You're really cooling off across some of the higher terrain, especially if you're off in the backcountry here. Keep that in mind. And look at Friday morning here. Very cool temperatures. A teen showing up for some of the lows. You can see Lake Tahoe right there, a lot of Nevada also. And then we go through Saturday, Sunday. We start to modify things a bit once that frontal system gets out of here. So we go on in through next week. And uh, one more time here with the probability total snowfall above one inch. This is last night's European model, right? You can see it does show that potential for this year in Nevada, some of Northern California and Nevada as well. And a little blurb there for some of the transverse range. So we'll see if that verifies. Reading Municipal Airport, look at that, a couple tenths of an inch of rain, not bad. We'll t definitely take anything we can get at this time of year. 
Sacramento International Airport, the control run actually showed three tenths of an inch as of last night. The mean is a little bit lower, about you know, 1,500 hundredths of an inch or so. And this is San Francisco, kind of grasping at straws a little bit here. But the control did show a tenth of an inch, so maybe a little bit of rain coming as we go through the day Wednesday. Here's Susanville, though. You look at the control run. It's up over half an inch. The mean is up over uh, two tenths of an inch also. Here's the six to ten day. We do bounce back above average. It's showing here in the second half of October. But, you know, temperatures are usually, you know, much more comfortable at this time of year and then below average here with some of the offshore wind uh, um, with precipitation. And again, with the drought monitor here, hopefully we can kind of prolong this drought and start to get some systems back in here because we have been exceptionally warm and exceptionally dry. So this may start to grow over the next few weeks. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, hope you guys are liking the channel. Click like and subscribe. We'll revisit this all again tomorrow and nail down some more of those details and see what those offshore winds are going to do. What precipitation chances are we going to have? And I will talk to you guys then.